It's episode 16 of Inside the Video Store. Welcome. Um, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. I had um, a really exciting young journalist here uh, yesterday, which was Monday. She came um, over from Liverpool representing Stat Magazine, S-T-A-T, -T, worth a follow on Instagram. Really interesting kind of uh, anti-profit arts and culture magazine that represents the northwest of England. So, so yeah, we had a gr great chat for about two hours. So hopefully uh, that should be in the next uh, issue, which, uh, yeah, should be really good indeed. And, of course, the shop this week housed uh, my latest commentary gig. Uh, so uh, we'll have more on that later. As for this week, it's a, it's a fairly wholesome uh, bundle this week, but it is week three in the month, so... Uh, that is to be expected. Uh, what we've got here for the first time for a long time is two big, big, big box office movies. <coughs> uh, we have Godzilla something Kong. Um, is that an X? Is that a multiplication symbol? Do you have Godzilla times Kong? I, I do not know. But is Godzilla something Kong? Um, something Empire? The New Empire. Uh, I read that this is apparently part of the MonsterVerse. I do not know what this is. Um, but anyway, um, it's here and it, it's it's out and it's available to rent in the video store. It was directed actually by uh, Adam Wingard, who um, I, I used to used to love his films going back um, a decade or so. Um, I, I do. I mean, great that he's actually achieved such a massive success, which is brilliant. But I do kind of miss the days where he put out stuff like Homesick and uh, A Horrible Way to Die. Um, they were the good stuff. This? Eh, not so much. But anyway, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, or Godzilla Times Kong, Multiplier Kong, X Kong, is in this week. Next, now, this is a box office franchise I'm up to speed with. It's uh, God, um, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Mainly, I'm up to speak with this because of my Dan Aykroyd obsession that I've uh, maintained throughout my entire life. Um, I, I just, I like this because obviously Aykroyd was the creator of the franchise. He's still in the franchise. He produces it. And of course, he is a complete and utter believer in the paranormal. Um, you know, it, it very much stems from him, his family. In fact, he says his family... Uh, his family business is the paranormal. You know, when you think of it, his dad wrote a couple of books on ghosts. Uh, his mother swears that she has seen ghosts. Um, his grandfather used radios, didn't he, to kind of get in touch with the other side. And his great-grandfather was a spiritualist. Um, <laughs> so a lot of the original Ghostbusters was, was written um, with a with a not so tongue in cheek uh, element in it, it was kind of what his what he really thought did go on in the universe. So uh, that's always given the whole series a lot more credibility for me. Um, but I like it, the new incarnation. I like the last movie, Afterlife, and and, and this movie. Uh, I'm really looking forward to. I, I do like the way it's been done. And yes, I even liked the ghost of Harold Ramis in the last movie, which is a very, very controversial point of view. But damn it, I'll stand by it. Shifting slightly, we have Birda, which is the new entry in our ever-expanding queer cinema section, which is growing at pace. This looks really interesting. It sounds pretty bizarre. You know, you've got this bird watcher who infiltrates a nudist colony and kind of attempts to ensnare the locals with his rather dark fetishes. Build as an erotic thriller, I don't know what to expect by it. I'm going to take it home tonight and have a little nose, because I am quite curious about this. But uh, yeah, again, TLA releasing gives us the goods. Um, next up, I mean, sees them, sees them. Only notable for me, because as you can see by the spine, it means that the entertainment and video label is still going somehow. I can't remember the last hit they had. Uh, but anyway, they're still going. Uh, and this is the new one. Whoops. Um, as you remember, back in the day, you know, EIV used to have the most 
awful cover art on movies, mainly around the late 90s, early noughties. Just shocking. You know, really garish. I mean, I suppose it stands out as a job, but as far as artistry goes, their cover art has notoriously been absolutely shocking. Um, but yeah, this, this anyway, this uh, is a, a British comedy. I've seen most of you switching off now. Um, and it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a comedy road movie set in the Dark Ages, which stars Nick Frost and Jessica Hines. So I do not know what this will be like, but uh, we shall see if anyone is brave enough to rent it. Now, the last of the brand brand new releases is, well, it's not brand brand new, it's 2018, but I'm going to stick this in with a new films because it's effectively new isn't it we haven't seen it in the country before i don't think um it's gun jam haunted asylum now i know many of you will roll your eyes the second i say found footage but apparently this is you know a fresh injection of brilliance into the genre i've always been a stoic defender of it um of found footage even in the very dark days when it seemed like every other film being released was a found footage film but i've always loved found footage um uh, even the really, really cheap ones, I, I, I do like them a great deal. Um, and for some reason, it's just what I, uh, paranormal activity. I, I did, I do love those films. I must actually get that paranormal activity box set that was doing the rounds on Blu-ray. Kind of crept out into the um, world because it didn't it contain the sixth movie. You, you can't get the sixth. Is it the sixth movie? You can't get that. Uh, as a as a standalone, it has just to be bought with the box set. Is the sixth movie any good? Is it all right? I haven't seen it. Um, I don't know what it's called. But yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, Paranormal Activity on Blu-ray isn't going to be any major shift from DVD. Essentially, you'll still be watching grainy footage of someone's bedroom. But um, I'm kind of like uh, I, I would like to pick up that set, but I'm curious as to how good the new film is that's part of that set. So if anyone knows. Let me know. But yeah, um, this looks great. Another one I'm going to take home. I shouldn't be taking films home. I, I, I'm on the ban for another week or so until I finish this project for Arrow. But I'm going to try and sneak some in on my, on my day off tomorrow. And um, this looks uh, an essential viewing because, uh, who was it said it? Uh, Bleeding Cool said it's one of the best of the genre. So yeah, looking forward to that. Good, a nice little selection of new, new films. Uh, here are the boutiques. Again, it's a really strong week. This is, um, yeah, this is Screambound. Screambound have had a checkered history with releases. They, they've always managed to cock something up on many, many discs. Uh, and they always tend to have little inclination to fix it. I forget what the most notorious one was. But anyway, um, it looks like they're putting out some classic British cinema. This being one directed by Val Guest, who um, such a, a wild career did Val Guest have. He worked for Hammer. He put out stuff like, um, made stuff like The Earth Cut, uh, The Day the Earth Caught Fire, which is a great British film. And he made stuff like um, The Boys in Blue, the Kenan and Ball movie. So a really varied career, but this one looks really, really interesting. You've got Ronald Lewis and Jack Warner in it, and it looks like a really cool whodunit. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. This one has just been rented out by Mr. Rob, uh, Bong Joon-ho's Memories of Murder. Long been unavailable in this country, both on streaming and on physical. But um, it's a remarkable film, isn't it? What a movie this is. One of the best Asian cinema films of the last... 20 years um so it's great to see it finally on a really good edition um put out by uh, curzon and this is a dual format uh, 4k uhd and blu-ray so nice to have it. three copies of this film now uh considering i've got the dvd as well we've got a load of art cards and a variety of stuff and ooh, and a booklet as well in there so uh, it's a it's a nice set it did come at a premium but uh, it's an essential piece of cinema, so it's worth it. Uh, next one for me is an upgrade. Ken Russell's The Music Lovers. I know BFI released a Ken Russell film that we had on the show a few weeks back. It was a, more than an hour ago, so obviously I can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, this is another one in a series of Ken Russell up upgrades. And yeah, great to have this one in on Blurry with a, a ton, an absolute ton 
of special features where they speak to Ken Russell's son and um, there's a Guardian interview as well. Um, uh, so yeah, absolutely loads on this. So uh, that's excellent. I didn't have this one prior to 88, bringing it out on Blu-ray this week. Jet Li's Fist of Legend. My martial arts section for a long time has been a little bit spotty, but obviously the past two to three years it has grown exponentially. And I think it's, I think my martial arts section is probably about three or four films off being perfection. Just got to catch up with a couple of releases that I missed out on from Eureka a few years back. But yeah, I'm really, really proud of that section. And it is renting a lot better than it has done, uh, and for good reason. But yeah, this, this Jet Li film I've never seen, um, and I probably should have done. Uh, but yeah, it's great to have this in from 88, and excellent artwork on that as well. Finally, with the boutiques, we have a, a another kind of martial arts fantasy that falls alongside things like encounters of the spooky kind and the dead of the deadly. Um, bit of comedy, bit of kung fu, uh, and yeah, uh, wholesome entertainment pg the miracle fighters comes in this week from eureka and again to um bolster that martial arts segment so that's yeah really cool really pleased with that stack of new releases this week a uh, bit of variety a uh, few bits i didn't get for good oh the sacrament yeah the sacrament came out from um second sight didn't it uh thai west film nice addition but I don't think the DVD has rented out more than once in the last four years. So no real desire to get a blue rail wait till it dips till to to about a tenner or something. Um, but it does look like a very nice edition. I think Lawnmower Man 1 or 2 came out again. But 30 quid for two very bang average films from a company that is liable to make it the odd mistake. I think I'll, I'll hang fire for one of their sales, I think, and... And pick it up for under 20 quid. Um, but yeah, pleased with that. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next bit. Well, hey, spaghetti westerns. And you thought it would never come. Um, yeah, so here we are in a rather awkward and uncomfortable position. Uh, standing on a footstool. Um, like that because some of these uh, sections are right up in the guts. Um, so yeah, this is my Spaghetti Western section, numbered about, about 77 titles. Uh, a lot of double bills here. Um, sorry for the wonky camera, but this is the best I can do in challenging circumstances. Um, so yeah, the, the thing with Spaghetti Westerns is I am not an expert. You know, by far... I am not an expert. Um, my knowledge of spaghetti westerns has come from Quentin Tarantino and customers. <laughs> and it's been on a really good book called Any Gun Can Play, which I really do recommend. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll pluck out some of my favorites, but um, I could do with spending probably about three months working my way through the 77 or so titles just to really, you know, have a good, good nose. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think a lot of these are rent, renting out at the moment because I think it's kind of summer season, sweaty, arid weather outside. And I think it kind of makes for ideal circumstances to watch spaghetti westerns. So uh, they aren't renting particularly well right now. Anyway, if, for example, I was to come in, or you were to come in rather, and uh, let's not veer into John Wayne there. We don't want to do that, Jesus. Um, if you were to come in and say, David, give me three spaghetti westerns to watch. Um, I'd probably go for one of, one of Quinton's favorite, which of course is Arizona Cult with uh, Juliana Gemma, which is a really, really cool film. I do like that a great deal. And I think if he hadn't mentioned that on a variety of different places, I don't think I would know about that. Um, one of my customers rented Campaneros last week. And uh, yeah, that is a very good film indeed. It's a very good film indeed. 
And I have this on Eureka Blu-ray, but I've kind of left a DVD here. So it's kind of got two placeholders in the store. Um, uh, and that's The Great Silence, which is one of the bleakest Westerns you'll ever see, but it is absolutely superb. And the new Blu-ray from Eureka is quite something. Um, what, was that? what was this one, was it? The Tramplers. Yeah, The Tramplers I have quite a soft spot for. Uh, obviously, because it's got Joseph Cotton, Gordon Scott in, but also, and Franco Nero, but also you'll see a name, a familiar name, above Franco Nero there, Albert Band, who is, of course, Charlie Band's dad, uh, who made a number of Italian films back in the 60s with Charlie on the set. I think Charlie was on the set of this one, from what I recall. Um, but yeah, that's, that's good fun, because it kind of has a connection to... Um, to something else entirely. Well, sort of around. Oh, Jake has instructed me that I must recommend Face to Face because he says that that's his favourite spaghetti western that he's seen so far. Uh, again, directed by Sergio Salima and uh, starring Thomas Millian. I mean, Thomas Millian. Holy cow! What an actor! What an actor! So yeah, that is one. And can we pick out a couple more? Oh well, yeah. This one, specialist Sergio Cabucci's. Um, some of the, the, I mean, obviously these down here are the uh, three Arrow box sets that have come out so far, um, and they're all excellent. They all have, I think, there's some Lucio Fulci film there, isn't there? Um, I forget which one it is. I'm probably going to cut this up. Was it Massacre Time? It was Massacre Time. Wow. Um, so yeah, that that was pretty cool. Um, oh, and the grand, the grand jewel. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe I do know a little bit about Spaghetti Western. But these, now these, I really need to get into. I invested a bit of money in the um, Wild East collection a little while back, and there's some interesting titles there. Obviously, the picture quality is is a little bit shaky on some, um, but that's okay, because I'm thinking to myself that a lot of these films are just absolutely impossible uh, to get a hold of. Now, one or two of these, of course, have come out, since come out on Arrow Blu-ray. But a lot of these, I don't think, are ever going to uh, see the day. And, and they're great. I just, I like the covers. Um, I like the way they've been thematically linked. Uh, you know, you got two Richard Harrison films there. What have we got here? Uh, two Peter Lee Lawrence films. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, so I, I like the way they kind of have a theme. Oh, that's a bit sticky. Why is that sticking? Oh, that's rather alarming. Um, three for one. Um, yeah, so that kind of. Um, oh, there we go, another one. Um, I join with Jam, a double feature. Wow, superb. So yeah, this is this is the part I need to really get into. Um, and I've seen most of the middle section here, obviously. Kiyoma, obviously Django, and a couple of sequels. Django prepares a coffin, Django shoots first. And of course, the original Django here. Um, but yeah, these here, the arrow sets, I really need to get into. Because they are absolutely wonderful. But yeah. Um, 77 Strong, Spaghetti Western. I mean, how many is that? There's about 500 or so, isn't there, from that era? But it's certainly um, one of my favorite sections just to, to throw on. I got, the great thing about Spaghetti Westerns is you could literally run your finger along the whole set and just pick one out and be completely happy and entertained by it. You very rarely get a, a mediocre Spaghetti Western. There's always something to it, whether it be the soundtrack, whether it be the lead actor who really does make it worth watching so yeah i mean obviously not particularly informative but if anyone has any recommendations either from the wild east maybe some one i haven't gotten is about how many was there about 70 um wild east dvds wasn't it? 70 volumes i've got about 20 15 16. um so if anyone has any recommendations from those that i should get then please let me know likewise i mean i know a lot of spaghetti westerns come out in germany that don't make it here so anyone uh, knows of any imports of any Spaghetti Westerns, then please let me know that might not be here, because I always like to get films in from abroad that kind of um, bring something new 
uh, to my customers. So yeah, please let me know. But hopefully, I mean, like I say, I'm not particularly informative and not a particularly great teacher of spaghetti westerns, but hopefully at least it gives you some kind of indication of uh, what this section holds. And obviously, on the other side here, we've got um, the uh, that 101 collection that they did. And then just over the top here, we have the regular American westerns on the opposite side there. Uh, we're like I say, John Wayne at the end there. Yeah, and there is your on-tour guide to spaghetti westerns. Quick look at what's been renting out this week again, despite the sunny weather out there. Some uh, some very interesting uh, picks from my customers, which is cool, and a lot of stuff that I'm kind of jealous that I can't watch at the moment either. Uh, this one out today, Vigilante Force, um, which is a great little bit of hmm, exploitation, uh, written and directed, of course, by George Armitage, who did um, Miami Blues and Gross Point Black. So, I mean, wow, what a director. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Great cast. you got John Michael Vincent in it and Chris Christopherson. And I love that pencil kind of artwork sketch on the front. This is available on um, MGM MOD, uh, MGM Manufactured On Demand. I don't know if it's still available, but uh, it's a nice little print on that and it looks pretty good. So, uh, yeah, good film. This is really interesting. This was BFI. See, that's one of the weird things too. BFI Flipside films rented out. I mean, honestly, no BFI Flipside rented out in weeks and weeks and weeks. Then you had Herostratus rent out last week. And then today, um, Psycho Mania rented out, as did Full Circle, which is just, Full Circle's amazing, isn't it? One of the recent releases by uh, BFI Flipside, directed by Richard Long Crane. Also their first 4K UHD release, which is twinned with a Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, and this, this is excellent. Really enjoy Keir Dullier, Tom Conti, um, Mia Farrow, of course. So, you know, there are some drawbacks. Sorry. Um, and it's based on Peter Straub's novel, Julia. But it's a really interesting film. Not perfect, but one of those great undiscovered slices of British filmmaking that is very, very interesting. One of my customers was in, in, in the week and he hadn't seen Breakdown. It was on his list. Um, and I'm really excited to know what he thinks about it because I love this film. I think it's one of the best thrillers of the 1990s, directed by, of course, Jonathan Mostow and featuring Kurt Russell in one of his best roles, although the true star of this film could well be J.T. Walsh, who remains, in my estimation, one of the best and greatest character actors of all time. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you want to have a deep dive anyway, check out J.T. Walsh on IMDb and take a look at some of his films because they're great. I especially recommend uh, Joe Cardone's Black Day Blue Night. Um, but yeah, Breakdown is terrific. Really pleased to see that going out. Um, Jakey Boy took uh, Cactus Flower, um, directed by Gene Sachs. This, uh, the reason I didn't have this in, but the reason I got it in was because one when uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out, uh, Quentin Tarantino did, I, I mean, you love my hate him, I know a lot of people hate him for some reason. He just likes films, you know, why hates him not likes films. Um, he did this amazing thing whereby he suggested a load of films that you might want to watch in order to get the vibe, get the history of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And this was on his list, Cactus Flower. And yeah, it is absolutely excellent. Walter Matthau, Ingrid Bergman, and uh, yeah, one of Goldie Horn's first roles as well, but it's really good, worth a look. I know people like Walter Matthau, but not many people have seen that one. It, it, it's, it's well worth a look. Uh, one of my new customers uh, took out, sometimes Aunt Martha does Dreadful Things, which is one of my favourite films. It's so good, as it says on the back cover, dropping somewhere between pink flamingos and an episode of The Brady Bunch on acid. I mean, you don't need me to say anything more than that, do you? Uh, sadly, my, my one regret from the AGFA release of this was that the uh, the uh, audio commentary from David Dakota got dropped from the DVD that they put out. But thankfully, I have the DVD as well. 
So you can have it, either have it with Dakota or without. But either way, it's an essential film to watch, and I uh, urge you to give it a go. Now, this is one of my blind spots. Ralph Bakshi, a legendary, iconic animator, but I've never seen anything that he's done. One of my customers took Wizards out today, which, reading the back of it, it does look amazing. Um, I can see, definitely see the appeal. Um, but yeah, I, I should really um, make a, uh, an effort to do this, especially some of the um, uh, Masters of Cinema animation as well, things like Gandahar. Looks amazing, um, but yeah, just need to make some time for that because uh, they look like really, really special films. Um, Julie Taymor's Titus went out uh, from my Shakespeare section today, uh, which again is, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen this, I glanced at the cast and saw Anthony Hopkins, Jessica Lang, Alan Cumming, Confio, um, Angus McFadden, Matthew Rhys, Jonathan Rhys Mayers, and I thought, why have I not seen this? It looks absolutely superb. Um, in fact, I don't, I don't even remember it coming out. Was it one of those Shakespearean adaptations that didn't really hit the spot at the time, just kind of drifted onto DVD? I, I don't know. But yeah, I need to change that and finally this week lee came in he was after some uh, some light-hearted material and he wondered if brigsby bear was any good and i must admit i love brigsby bear it's such a great fantasy film ah, it's brilliant a real mood lifter um and i'm really pleased to see it renting out because i don't think it's been sh shifted for a good few years now when did it come out 2017 2018 six years yeah it didn't do much when it first came into store and hasn't done much, much since, but I'm glad I kept hold of it because it's one of those films that I think uh, it, its reputation will, will only grow in time. So, yeah, that is a good little selection of what went out this week. And, um, yeah, always interesting to see this. So this is my Sunday evening, Sunday the 23rd of June. Um, I'm recording an audio commentary for Arrow Video. Um, this is our 24th or 25th audio commentary that we've done in the last uh, five or six years. And I record every one here because it just has the right vibe. Uh, to be honest, I'm going to be joined in a second by my co-conspirator at the schlockpit.com, Matty Budravich. And uh, yeah, we'll have a little chat about um, what we're going to do, what we're going to say. We've got copious notes uh, left around the place, bullet points. We don't tend to read from a script, as a lot of people do, like Tim Lucas, for example. We, we just prefer personally to listen to a more informal chat, but one that's peppered with stories and historical detail uh, about the film itself. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get Matty on the line and then... Uh, We'll prep our commentary. So, Matthew Budrevich, how are you? I'm good, man. Are you okay? I am very well indeed. Are you looking forward Excellent. to uh, looking forward to this evening? Uh, I am. Yes, we are up to no good. We're, we're secretly plotting for our latest commission, so it's it's very exciting working for. Uh, I don't even I don't even think we can get away with saying who who the uh, commentaries for. Oh, I've said that already. So uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for dropping the F-bomb there, by the way. That's, that's oh, 16 oh, episodes it took, and, and you know you managed to crack it within the first, uh, within the first 60 great. seconds. I'm, well, I'm miffed that it's taken this long for you to get me on. And you've, and you've well, got me on in, in a vocal capacity. And I'm fairly sure, you, when you said that this is about an audio commentary, is this in like response to uh, that thing Tim Lucas posted the other day about the sort of craft sort of side? <laughs> yeah, because... Um, you, you just need to look at us too, and nothing shouts out more than than, than well honed craft. <laughs> just two very very lucky, bumbling idiots who found a little niche, I think. So. Well, I don't know about that, but but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just being self deprecating. Yeah. The second, we, the second we come off this, the arrogance will really kick in. Oh, without doubt, without doubt. Um, but you still enjoy it? Oh, I love it. I love what we do. I think it's great. Mm. Um, it's um, we're very very. It, it's strange actually. We were just saying before we started rolling that the the commentary that we're doing is for this is the first film 
that we've ever done where I don't actually care all that much for the movie. <laughs> Um, so we've been very spoilt a lot of the, a lot of the time because mm. we get to do films that you know they they aren't this the kind of well ish known but they're sort of more off the beaten track mm-hmm. than most of the, the releases by the likes of Arrow and eighty eight films and stuff. You know we we've got our own little lane, our little groove, whatever yeah. you want to call it, that we sort of drive along in. Mm. Uh, and so a lot of the time we are fans of what we do, which does make it a hell of a lot easier. You know, you, you want you you want to pass that enthusiasm. Yeah, but we're, we're not we're not mercenaries, are we? You know, we, we don't take mm. we don't take mercenary gigs just for the money. You know, on, on stuff that we don't like. But but mm. uh, but this this is is part of a series, and, and the first film is a bit more hard work than than a couple yes. of the sequels. Yes, we're we're a fan of the later entries. I think. Or mm. me, I mean, I know that you quite like this. The I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, and it's it, it, yeah. We we are quite. I'd say we're quite selective over mm. what we do. You know, we don't just sort of like lobby for any old rubbish. We, you know, we do. We don't want to work just for the sake of it. I mean, we are very fortuitous in that sense that we don't have to spend a great deal of time hustling like mm. a, a lot of freelancers do. You know, we've got other irons in the fire. We've got like other work that we can that keeps us ticking over and things mm. like that. So, but at the same time, I'd really resent anyone who sort of referred to us as, as hobbyists or glorified, <laughs> you know, glorified fans or whatever. Yeah, I hate that. that. We got that a lot on the Arrow box set, and, and that was a bit yeah. annoying. It was like yeah, uh... and that really knocked me because I think <laughs> we. We're very meticulous. We we try and keep things relaxed and mm. make things like entertaining. But we we do our homework. We study the films like completely, and and, and everything that we do comes from a place of, of of film criticism because that's what we are passionate about. That's our you know that's our thing. That's what we want to do. That's what we enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... I'll always know what you did last. No, I'll, yeah, I'll always know what you did last summer. That that was the one that mm. um, kind of like was my tough one to be honest. Really? But you, you kind of pulled really? me around um, during mm. during the commentary, and that was kind of uh, people liked that. Someone actually commented about that. They said, you know, how I I started out in the intro, kind of dismissing it, and then as the film went on, I, I was drawn to your um, way of thinking. So I think oh, good. that that was one that uh, that we sort of been in a similar situation with. That was one um, one of the ones I, I probably enjoyed doing the most. In mm-hmm. fact, I really relished the chance to, you know, when, when you say, do, you, do we enjoy it? Yeah, because that was my chance to to really sort of wave the flag for a film that just, you know, I, I dare say even the filmmakers aren't particularly proud of that movie. <laughs> you know, it, it's certainly seen as a very, very throwaway film. So just mm-hmm. to be able to spend, like, its running time, maybe not not defending it, but sort of pointing out the things that people could, maybe savour, maybe you could appreciate a little bit. That was cool. I, re- I really enjoyed doing that one. But mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. I think we even mentioned it in a few commentaries. And so our, our baby really was Moon in Scorpio. Oh, that yeah. Was like, yeah. That was the one that we were really sort of, um, mm. you know, we, we, we nurtured it from sna- snagging the rights mm. to, to delivery. It's just a shame that we got sort of... Uh, I don't know. I won't go into the politics. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a salty bastard. No, don't, I mean? don't don't go into like, the politics. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be cyborg yeah. and we'll be here till ten o'clock at night <laughs> talking about that. So it's best not. Right, we've got work to do, so we're going to crack on. Um, and yeah, yeah that, that, that is that is our, our, our commentary. You can buy it in um, several months' time. Uh, so yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the comments section. But first, we do have a few. No what's in the box this week, thankfully, because there's no massive box of goodies. Um, withdrawal symptoms, obviously, as any um, FOMO-obsessed uh, person uh, feels. But, um, yeah, just a few little bits. I got my uh, melusine.com uh, parcel over, which uh, had a great double bill. We have... Um, as part of the Cecil Howard collection, we have two more uh, films from Chuck Vincent. Uh, Heavy Load and Lecture. One is a triple X film, one isn't. Um... No, no, I think they both are, aren't they? Anyway, they're both two early Chuck Vincent films. Uh, Heavy Load is from 75, Lecture is from 73. Um, no major special features, which is kind of a little bit of a shame. 
Um, but you know, just the fact that we have now got, well, we haven't because obviously I'm not allowed to rent pornography. It would be against the uh, Obscene Publications Act. Um, but I have in the store, <laughs> away from Human Eye, um, I think it's six, it's six Chuck Vincent films now, which is just remarkable. I would never would have thought that a couple of years back. So that's really, really cool. Uh, also in from ManyScene.com is this, well, this was really interesting. This is Sex Demon, um, which is a gay porn version of The Exorcist. Um, remarkable. It's, it's the new ad for film. Uh, it will definitely be an ad for film that 101 Films will not be releasing because uh, it does contain uh, quite a large amount of hard poor, hardcore pornography and fisting. <laughs> I do not think fisting is uh, something for 101 Films to uh, uh, to look at or to release. But you never know, strange things will happen. So yeah, it, it comes as a threesome, no pun intended, with uh, Sex Demon from 75, Deadly Blows from 71 and 10.30pm Monday from 1975. Um, remarkable story uh, regarding those. I think a friend of mine on Facebook, um, whose name is going to escape me. No, it won't. Ah, Elizabeth Pachel, um found these in abandoned in a San Francisco warehouse. Um, remarkable. Cleaned them up. A lot of effort into restoring them. They're not perfect, obviously, but who cares? Uh, and it is a, a remarkable piece of history. So I'm thrilled to have these in. Uh, obviously, this qualifies as triple X cinema. So due to the UK's archaic uh, pornography laws, I will not be allowed to rent this film in any capacity. So I'm just going to put it away just on the shelf to, to, to the left hand side of the counter, the fourth shelf down, it will be the fourth title along. And every hour I should be making a cup of coffee and away from the counter. Um, but I'm sure I will keep my beady eye on that film at all times. Um, but yeah, amazing release, really. Uh, piece of history. Um, when my cut Lee came in and he mentioned, that I think he heard a podcast and he was saying that um, Vampire Movie, William Smith. I thought, Vampire Movie, William Smith. I know that, Grave of the Vampire. Now, I, do ha I don't know if that's the right one, but it must be the right one, because I think that's the only vampire film William Smith has done. I have it on a really shoddy UK VHS copy DVD bootleg thing that wound up in shops but it's awful quality i forget the brand name i'll drag it out later um but yeah awful so i, I imported the spa it has been had a release on american blurry but from kino and of course kino are region locked um but luckily I, I picked up the spanish spanish um dvd which seems quite um genuine to be honest and it's not a perfect picture quality but it's not bad at all it's not bad at all and of course i really really passionately love this film because it's been directed by John Hayes um, and I've been I've been writing about films for 10 years and everything and every article I write every project I do I always complete you know I am a I'm very good I don't tend to leave a million projects unfinished but my John Hayes essay I still haven't done it. even in my inbox I still have an email from Stephen Thrower uh, from about three or four years ago <laughs> regarding this and yeah I just something came I think we got a, low, a wave of commentaries from ATA maybe the Van Damme stuff and I lost my focus I, I think it was over lockdown I'd just seen every John Hayes film maybe bar one he directed 26 films 26 features one seems to be able and missing um, but I watched every single one made notes on every single one and, and swore I would do this great John Hayes season for the schlock pit because he is one of my favorite filmmakers um, alongside you know Joe Cardone and um, Paul Leder those three guys John Hayes Paul Leder J.S. Cardone three filmmakers if somebody had somebody pinned me back down and said pick the three filmmakers you'd like to see receive more recognition then it would probably be them um, and yeah and this is one of John Hayes's best films um, would you have seen any John Hayes films? 
maybe you might have one of his that's in the American Horror book set that Stephen Thrower curated. Um, but that's about it. I don't. I don't think you will have. Oh yeah, you might have the Charlie Band film he did. He did a film for Charlie Band. Um, End of the World with Christopher Lee, uh, which Christopher Lee really loves. Um, so he did that. He was engaged to Rue McClanahan of the Golden Girls for about two or three years in the 1960s. He directed segments of a porno that David Dakota directed segments of. And that's the thing with John Hayes. He has so many, he's touched on so many aspects of films that I'm obsessive about. It just seems like, uh, well, yeah, that's why I gravitated towards him. Anyway, a waffling madly. Grave of the Vampire, really pleased to have a half-decent copy of that end, because I think it's a really cool film, I don't think many people have seen that. And of course it has Michael Pataki in, who I think is one of those great actors who, like John Alderman, just never, and J.T. Walsh, who I mentioned before, never receives the praise that they deserve. Uh, I mentioned this last week, the Andrew Haig film, after um, All of the Strangers came in, which is renting like hotcakes. I, I mentioned Weekend. I've got Weekend, of course, on DV, DVD since the day it came out, but I thought it might be worth upgrading it to Blu-ray as well to give people the option, so that is in. And also, a weird one that I didn't have in, didn't have Tower of London. Some customer asked me for it, didn't have it. So, uh, yeah, pleased to get that film in as well. So that's a quick look at some very small boxes. Um, so come in, let's have a look at quick, brief, brief, brief look through the comments. Limon is thrilled that we managed to get a copy of The Deliberate Stranger in. Uh, if you want to get you on, Lee, just let me know. I'll, I'll add it to one of my month monthly um, overseas orders. Wouldn't be a problem. It's not particularly expensive. So, yeah, if you need it, let me... Or if you want one, let me know. It's region free, of course, as well. Um, yeah, Beowulf says, um, Upgrading format is costly. And where does one stop? I get the VHS to DVD upgrade because the quality is noticeable. Yes, it is. And of course, the hardware is different, but changing from Blu-ray to 4K um, is sometimes unnecessary. It can be. It can be. Um, would you publish a physical release of this series? Absolutely not, because no one in their right mind would want to buy me on DVD or Blu-ray staring at the camera and talking waffle about films that would be torture maybe if they played in guantanamo bay to try and you know elicit confessions from um, terrorists maybe that might work paul berryman says another great episode dave i've been using a database for my film collection right for about five years it's been fantastic because as you say you can easily forget uh, often i'll pull up when browsing in store or online to double check a title yeah uh, database is the best thing i ever did it, it was a nightmare to do. I had to pretty much shut down every project I had on the go for three weeks. And for three weeks, all I did was beep, 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 all around the store, 16,000 times. And it was it was, it was, was maddening, to be honest. It sent me around the bend. Um, but I'm so glad I did it because, you know, touch wood, as long as CLZ <clears throat> movies doesn't go anywhere, then um, I've got very little to do. I just need to add a dozen or so movies every week to it and subtract anything that I get rid of because there are one or two titles I get rid of that are maybe just DTV that don't really have any longevity um, yeah BM squared I have 1100 blu-rays and maybe 400 DVDs and without a database I would have zero clue with what I bought I know I know we need to know um, David Ackerman says really enjoying your weekly videos I have the Spanish Spanish blu-ray of sleepaway camp and whilst it's okay it's a burnt BDR right so most likely not an official release that's a shame isn't it that's a shame ah never mind never mind um and Papa Wheelie says that he's already pre-ordered all the strangers on Criterion however he didn't know it was going to be on Criterion so he ended up buying the UK version too and he's in the US um, but hey, you know, if there's any film which you can justify two copies of, I'm sure, any contemporary film you can justify two copies of, I'm sure it's All the Strangers, which is so cool. Um, yeah, Film World says that, uh, of course, I was un unsure of why I got Star 80 and why I got um, What's Up Doc last week. And of course, Film Month rightly says that Star 80 is the story of Dol Dorothy Stratton, who was a Playboy playmate who was suddenly killed by her boyfriend. Um, then, of course, I mentioned Peter Bogdanovich 
Next, who of course had an affair with Dorothy Stratton around the time that she died, which uh, was coincidental, uh, to be honest. Uh, Tom Jones says, The Dream Demon is great, which of course I mentioned on last week's On Loan. One of those wild and flawed 80s British horror films with grand ideas and occasionally slip shot execution. Um, yeah, uh, it is good. It is good indeed. Um, ah, Dulcman Dave. Great show as always, Dave. What do you make of the announcement that 88 Films is going to be putting out the Guts trilogy in the UK? I really can't see it getting past the BBSC unscathed, but it seems they're getting more lenient with stuff considering we've recently had House on the Edge of the Park and even some Category 3 Hong Kong movies like Erotic Ghost Story uncut. I replied to you, Dave. I said I will text them ASAP. I didn't. I will text them. Well, it's a bit late now. It's up past seven. But I'll text them first thing in the morning and I will... Uh, reply to you uh, as soon as possible because uh, I know a lot of people are uh, I know it's a cliche and I know whenever any new film or old film rather is announced on blu-ray the first comment from anyone is normally is it uncut um, and yeah but in this case I think people have a right to know whether it's uncut or not because it is a uh, an important issue so I'll try and get an answer for you but yeah that's that's excellent news but then again don't get me started on the bbfc because i just think it's a redundant and disgraceful organization um that that shouldn't exist you know the fact that our tiny little company like treasured films has got to pay a thousand pound to get a movie through the bbfc which you know can be certified self-certified to be honest quite easily I think is absolutely uh, ridiculous, outrageous, quite frankly. And I know one of my friends, Liam Regan, when he um, he had to certify his, his own films, um, you know, Eating Miss Campbell and Banjo, I had to pay a thousand pounds for the. It's, it's like it's like a bail, you know, to, to pay a thousand pound just to put this film on the shelf in any retail establishment in the UK is just outrageous. It is absolutely being handcuffed and um, tarred and, and feathered. Uh, absolutely disgusting um, but still um, nice to end on a positive note uh, and that is this week's comment section please keep your comments uh, coming really interesting to read them and uh, yeah we'll see if we've got some more to read out next week but now I think we need to do some Sleeping Giants <laughs> Renting Ghostbusters tonight. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Okay. Um, wrap up with some uh, Sleeping Giants. Still going. Still going with lots of uh, non-streaming movies, which is very interesting. And I've got a, a slight theme for the first two of these. Um, we did Soldier, uh, didn't we? Kurt Russell. A couple of weeks back, because that's not streaming. And by chance, I mean, this is bonkers. Uh, it seems like someone has it in for um david peoples david peoples of course wrote blade runner yeah uh he wrote soldier which isn't streaming um he wrote and directed salute to the jugger which isn't streaming i mean how can salute the jugger not be streaming that's just frankly offensive um so yeah rutger howard joan chan vincent d'onofrio um so yeah so i think some, some somewhere Someone somewhere has something against David Peoples, considering Soldier, Salute to the Jugger, and Leviathan. Le I mean, Leviathan isn't even on DVD in this country. I had to import this this rather average Korean um, DVD. Uh, don't know why. Don't know why. Well, I know why. It's obviously caught up with someone, some, something in rights. But yeah, this was part of the whole underwater theme uh, of films that came out around the time. The Abyss was another, there was Leviathan, and there was one more which I can't remember the name of. Who was it? Who did that? I forget. It'll come to me as soon as I turn that camera off. Um, but yeah, so so somewhere, some, someone somewhere has something against David Peoples because he wrote this, and it's not on streaming. Some of the Jugger is not on streaming, and of course Soldier is not on streaming. So, you know, if you want to write off you're doing a thesis on the work of David Peoples, and you think, ah, let me go to streaming platforms and see what I can watch. You won't get anything, which is nutty, amazing. Um, 
I've always had a SNL Saturday Night Live fetish, and I love I love Saturday Night Live spin-off movies. I think I've mentioned this in the past. We mentioned Knights of the Roxbury, um, and yeah, I, I do love SNL spin-offs and just movies with former SNL people in them. Of course, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey did um, Wayne's World. Mike Myers achieved great success with um, So I Married an Axe Murderer and of course the Austin Powers films. Um, less so with The Love Guru. Um, but Dana Carvey, of course, did Clean Slate, which is not streaming anywhere. Um, and it's, it's a pretty good film, you know. It, it is not bad. I don't think anyone... Uh, we'll remember this one coming out. A great cast, you got Michael Gambon, James L. Jones, Kevin Pollock, Michael Murphy. And of course it's directed by Mick Jackson, who did, um, didn't he do Volcano? And didn't he do um, L.A. Story with Steve Martin? That was a great film. Um, but yeah, Clean Slate, not streaming. MGM as well. So that's Amazon, isn't it? You would have thought it would be up there, wouldn't you? Weird, weird. You just know uh, no sense to these streaming Films just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, um, long show. Sorry to waffle. Hope that commentary bit wasn't too boring. Me staring into space and listening to Matty Pedrovich. Um, but if it was interesting, let me know because I'll uh, we'll do a little part two uh, this week when we're doing um, some more commentaries um, because we still have three to go. Oh dear. Um, and yeah, that is about it. So yeah, please, please uh, subscribe uh, when you can, if you can, if you're able. And then next week is the last week of the month, so we have a uh, a bit of a, a, a slightly increased number of uh, boutique releases. Uh, I'm not sure what the contemporary market offers. Um, because, uh, oh no, it's not the last week of the month, is it? This was the last week of the month. I don't know. I don't really know what day it is, really. I think since... Uh, um, this week's this month's been so busy I think it, it's just all been a blur um, but anyway less waffle and uh, more haste so I will see you in seven days time